Everyone, hi, Bruce Muffson from Sunridge of Nevada coming at you with another video. First of all, I've got to say right out uh, to everyone, the comments, the comments, the comments, I love them. They're great. They're coming in faster and faster. Also, the views continue to climb and our subscribers continue to climb. So thank you for everyone that's catching on, that's watching us, that's sharing our videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We continue to have new ideas and new concepts, com new concepts coming up. So just be prepared and just enjoy. Okay, today's video, uh, we got a, I got a lot of subscribers and just people in general, I'm, I should not say just subscribers, that said, can you please do Earl Sweatshirt? I must have gotten like 20 of these. Uh, over the last about two years. Can you break his music down? I love him. He's great. Great video, Bruce, but can you do Earl? Can you do Earl Sweatshirt? Okay, fine. So we put people on back burners that we want to try and do and get to. Guess what? All of you Earl Sweatshirt fans, we got one of his songs today we're going to talk about. But I'm also going to talk about him from a clinical perspective because I find him fascinating, to be quite honest. The song that we picked was called Solace. And um, it's a 10-minute song with a lot of instrumentals. He's, he's, of course, like everyone we cover, they're gifted. Uh, they're amazing. They're great wordsmiths. And they all have a style all their own. And I appreciate each and every one of them. But there are things in this song that I found interesting that I wanted to discuss. So here I go. On this part one, this part two, uh, part three and four and five, but some of the parts are just basically instrumentals. I want to focus, of course, on the part that has the lyrics that I found interesting. Just a little bit about him. For those of you that have no clue or not really sure or know the history, one of the things to fill in, at the age of 16, um, his mom, who is a law professor at the University of California, she had sent him to a boarding school in Samoa called Coral Reef Academy, and he was there for a year and a half. And he was sent there doing, due to having several uh, issues. One was smoking a lot of marijuana, two, having problems in school, and three, having a fallout with his martial arts school or slash instructor that he'd been going to for several years. So she felt that he needed the structure clear that she could not provide, and she sent him to this school. And um, what does the word soulless come from? S-O-L-A-C-E. It's from a term referring to psychological comfort, giving to someone who has suffered a severe upsetting loss, such as the death of a loved one. I'm giving soulless to my best friend since he lost his dad two weeks ago. That's where the term comes from. Okay, so in the song, what's interesting to me is that Earl, of course, not his real name. That's the name he's adopted, Earl Sweatshirt. He takes on the persona of someone who's really dealing with a lot of depression and a lot of anger and a lot of frustration. And the question is, why? He's only in his mid-20s. He should be really looking forward to being able to be a performer for the next 30, 40 years. Here are some of the, so the, some of the lyrics that he puts out, some of the verses. Um, you could see it in my face. I ain't been eating. I'm just wasting away. And he talks often about having an eating disorder. He also says this, and when they drag me out of the gutter, please mail the ashes to my mother, talking about an imminent death. He also says, well, since I ain't been to prison, but the feeling's the same. Again, the feeling of hopeless, feeling of depression, feeling of anxiety. And then finally, he also throws, and I love this line, one foot is stuck in a tar pit of my ways. One foot stuck in a tar pit of my ways. I mean, he's great with the lyrics, no argument there, but it's almost like I can't get through my past. My past is catching up with me. I can't get through my past. I'm stuck, and I'm stuck, and I'm stuck. And then he says this again, and this part I truly believe he feels this way, is he goes, I've been alone for the longest. And I truly believe that Earl feels that way about himself, that he has been alone most of his life. Now, I know, I know, I know he has a group of guys that he hangs out with, and he had a group before he went to Samoa, and they were tight, and then he came back, and he's kind of sort of been with these guys ever since. But quite frankly, this is for my clinical opinion, I don't get that sense that they're, you know, tight, tight. I just get a sense that he's alone a lot. That's the impression I just get from him clinically. Again, I don't know Earl, never evaluated him, never had him for counseling, just as a clinical impression. Then on part four, he goes, to tell the truth, I got a problem with eating. 
I be drugging. And he throws right away, back to the eating disorder and his drug usage. And then he closes part four with, well, time waits for no man and death waits with cold hands. Again, imminent feelings of death. And I'm the youngest old man that you know. I'm old before my time. And as an expression I've been making the rounds the last couple of years called he's an old soul. That maybe he's 25, but he has the persona or the way of looking at things as someone who's 65. And I want to know why Earl feels that way, why his music has taken this darker turn since his return from Samoa, that he has these issues and he has these feelings of basically death is right around the corner. I don't feel good about myself. I still have a drug problem, which suppose he was cleared up in Samoa, and I'm not feeling good about who I am. And hey, if anything happens, take my remains to my mom because I, I'm not eating and I'm using drugs as a way to cope. Okay, and that's something that just was interesting to me. Now, there was a comment made by one of the commenters on this song, and it was by Yeezus Peace, Y-E-E-Z-U-S. And it goes like this. It's always interesting how the fans pick up on things as well. And he goes, I hope Earl copes okay with Max passing because Earl's tweeting is showing that he ain't feeling too well, especially since his dad died this year, too. His, his father recently passed away. As much as I want another Earl album, I want Earl to feel good and well and just continue living. Guess what, guys? If he was my patient, though, and he wrote these lyrics and I saw them, I would say, Earl, I'm doing what's called an L2K on you or in California, um, whatever their version is, you're going inside. Because to me, you're feeling very depressed. It's almost like you're feeling suicidal and you're crying out for help through your lyrics. That's how I would look at it on a clinical level. 25 years old, he's on the apex, just the beginning of his career, and he's feeling so negative. Now, um, he's so young, but he wishes, he writes as though he is so old. Where is that coming from? Now, I got some help from my producer, my agent, my Mr. Everything. He sent me an article from LA Weekly. It goes, in defense of Earl's mom, okay? And here's the picture of Earl singing, but it's a long article, but it's actually an interesting article because it talks about him going, the backlash of him going to Carl Reef Academy, and what happened was, particularly on Twitter, it became free Earl, free Earl, free Earl. Earl's in exile. And um, it was on Twitter and songs, even at a basketball game, they're chanting, they're chanting, free Earl, free Earl. And there was even an article for the New York Times that an, a threatening note was left at the door of his mother, Cheryl Harris, basically saying, you're holding Earl from us. He's not lost. He's in exile because you put him there. And... Um, they said something interesting, that the group that he was with, Odd Future, that everything she was for, which stands for authority, structure, and school, well, she is a law professor at a prestigious law school. Uh, I'm sure she does understand about authority, understanding the law. The law is about structure, and school is about studying through the school of law. They were totally against that. And my question is, why? What was so wrong about the mom? And the reason why I'm bringing this up clinically is because so many of the times of the homes I've walked into, which were dreadful and being led by children because the parents were the children, <laughs> the children were the ones providing the authority, the structure, and they were the ones going to school because the parents weren't enforcing anything. Go to school, don't go to school. I'm not making lunch anyway for you. I hope you're getting a free lunch. And the kid would tell me, 8, 9, 10 years old, oh, I forged my mom's signature, so I'm on the free lunch program. I mean, that's the way it was. So I find it so interesting that here's a mom that's saying, look, I'm making clearly 1% of their income, and I'm asking you just do the basics for me. I'm just a single mom trying to get through because his father wasn't really in it, was really not in his life. And you get this conflict what the mother's trying to preach, which seems to me 
what all the kids that I see in detention, in juvie, in foster care, in psychiatric hospitals is this is what they do want. So it is a concerned parent, if I was in her shoes, what was she supposed to have done anyway? So she had to feel that he was slipping out of control. And as a single mom, trust me, hey, single moms out there, you got my respect. Um, you always worry if you're doing enough or if you're acting or if you're adequate. And how do you handle things if you don't have a stable re- male role model, i.e. the biological father around? You're always feeling that you're never giving enough and you're not good enough. And where's a man to show my son how to be a man? By the way, Carl Reef, I did some digging. It's not uh, a cheap place to go to. I found something from 2009 that due to the recession, they had cut the prices to $4,500 a month. I guarantee you 10 years later, it's not $4,500 a month. It has to be several thousand dollars a year more. And I'm sure there's scholarships and they do different things, but the school is not inexpensive. You have to have money to send your kid there. So clearly she's doing the best she can in her mind to try and find that structure for her son that he's not getting at home. So, um, and he was there for a year and a half. That's an expensive program, and that had to cost her easily close to six figures, if not more. Thank God she was a law professor and maintained that kind of profession and that kind of academic standing that she was in that kind of position to be able to pay for it. I guarantee you insurance is not going to cover a school like that. The point I'm trying to make from going over this song, great song, he has a lot of great songs out there, not an argument, is that you can be great like he is, but as we all do, we often feel that we have to fit in. Like those around us, even if we take on the worst part of impulses to do things to fit in, like i.e. use drugs or take lean, when you come from a background where none of that is even like understood or encouraged. It's like I got to fit in with the worst impulses of the people that I'm suddenly around when I come from a background where they would look at me like I was insane for even getting started in the first place. You know, p- people who are in law, a lot of them come from prosecutory backgrounds where they prosecute people for drug offenses or for drinking lean and getting into an auto accident and killing people. But they would never see their kids involved in something like that or their grandkids because they're being groomed for success, as I'm sure Miss Harris was thinking about when she had her little child, her little baby angel. Makes total sense. My point is, for those watching, and I know you guys continue to grow, is I don't want you to feel that you have to fit in. Fit in on the positive level. Fit in on on the way that's going to take you to the top, that's going to rocket you. Don't fit in in a situation where you're not going to be able to fit in. Learn to be happy with yourself and who you are. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care about your gender. We always say it's always white, black, brown, yellow. Find your sweet spot and be comfortable in that spot and go forward. And unless and you don't, you know, and you don't send your kid halfway around the world unless you truly feel that he's out of control, that you can't do anything with him. Beef with mom, you know, there's all this talk about in all the writings and in all of his songs, he's, he's cursing at his mom, his mom's cursing at him. But in one of his songs, he's like, you know, they start cursing at each other. But then he, in the next verse, it's like, just get out of bed, son, go to school. And he's like, <sighs> okay, mom. Uh, Good morning, I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'm going to get started. That's really a real conversation. There's no beef. The only beef is, you know, we want you to um, grow up and be successful. So so he didn't have to grow up hard, have a life spent in juvie, or be in the foster care system, which clearly from looking at his history, I don't see any of that. He didn't have to deal with any of that craziness. So... This is what happens to me. The unhappiness in his lyrics came from between him and his mother because he's still learning about himself and who he is. And when he gets to that point, when he fully internalizes what the school did to him for a year and a half, his lyrics and his music and his insight will only be richer, that much better, and that much greater for himself and for his fans. For everyone listening, okay, 
True growth is when you don't have to listen to labels on who you are supposed to be, but who you truly are, okay? Earl, here's my last comment to you. Have great career, great success. Your mom loves you very much. Your mom loves you very much. And if I was your dad, I'd want the same exact things for her that she wants as well. Knock out great music, but knock it out with confidence and feel good about yourself and learn to like who you are and learn to love your mom and internalize what you went through in a healthy way and don't turn to drugs or eating disorders as a way to cope. It's not going to do anything positive for you. For everyone watching, again, Bruce Muffs and LCSW, thank you so much.